Standing in this remarkable spot, you can literally feel the Earth's forces at work. It is the meeting point for two major tectonic plates that have been struggling to overpower each other for an eternity. This place is the infamous San Andreas Fault Line, and it is possibly the origin point of one of the greatest disasters in California's history. The San Andreas Fault is the boundary between the Pacific and the North American tectonic plate. Scientists have been keeping an eye on this area for decades, and it is considered one of the biggest threats faced by Southern California today. But how is that possible? Why is the San Andreas Fault so dangerous? And how can we be ready for this disaster? The San Andreas Fault has a long and violent history, stretching approximately 1,200 kilometers. It is a right lateral strike-slip fault, meaning that the two plates are sliding past each other horizontally. To gain a better understanding, imagine both the North American and Pacific plates as two trains going in opposite directions just centimeters apart from each other. In theory, these trains should pass each other without bumping into each other. But they are weighed down so much by passengers and luggage that they end up bumping into each other a couple of times, which releases a lot of energy and shakes both of these trains up, which, in the case of these plates, causes earthquakes. The fault is believed to have formed around 30 million years ago during the mid-Cenozoic era. This fault is divided into three segments. The northern segment, from Hollister to the Mendocino Triple Junction, the central segment from Parkfield to Hollister, and the southern segment from Parkfield to the Salton Sea. A significant portion of the population in California resides in the region surrounding this fault. San Francisco's BART system even has a tunnel that passes through the fault zone. The fault has a slip rate of between 20 and 35 millimeters per year, meaning that the plates are moving at a steady pace. But the pressure can build up over time before being released in the form of a large earthquake. Andrew Lawson, a professor at the University of California, Berkeley, discovered the San Andreas Fault in 1895. It is often believed that the northern portion of the fault was named after a small lake in the valley between the two plates, known as the San Andreas Lake. However, Lawson's publications from 1895 to 1906 suggest that he named the fault after the adjacent San Andreas Valley. After the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, Lawson deduced that the fault extended as far south as Southern California. The San Andreas Fault Observatory at Depth, or SAFOD, was a project that ran from 2004 to 2007 near Parkfield in Monterey County. Its goal was to collect data and run physical and chemical tests to better understand the strange behavior. Scientists came to the conclusion that there is a high possibility of a big earthquake in California that will lead to the destruction of the Hoover Dam and several industrial and residential areas, and that a huge wave is likely to occur and hit the infamous Golden Gate Bridge. The movie fanatics among you might already know about this if you've watched the movie San Andreas featuring the one and only Dwayne Johnson. Before making San Andreas, the people who made it talked to Thomas Jordan, who runs the Southern Californian Seismic Center. However, the level of destruction depicted in the film significantly exceeds the actual potential damage that could be caused by a catastrophic earthquake, known as the Big One. It is likely that the filmmakers did not adhere closely to Jordan's recommendations. Since the San Andreas Fault lies far inland and the land slips past on either side, an earthquake cannot cause the fault to split apart into a massive chasm as in the movie, says Jordan. Instead, big tsunamis, like the one that struck Japan, are caused by earthquakes that cause a significant displacement of the ocean floor. Even though scientists have said that even the strongest earthquakes will only be felt on the east coast, this does not mean that California will not be affected. It is predicted that a lot of infrastructural damage might be caused in California along with power cuts and water supply issues. Ned Field, a seismologist with the U.S. Geological Survey, thinks that Southern California is locked and loaded because the pressures have really built up and could explode for years. The North American plate keeps moving to the southeast, leaving California as its border, while the Pacific plate moves to the northwest. Because the two plates don't just collide at a single point, the state is crisscrossed by many earthquake faults. San Andreas, according to Jordan, is the most concerning fault line because it produces earthquakes that are very deadly for people living in California. San Francisco was demolished by the northern San Andreas in 1906, 
while the southern San Andreas hasn't ruptured for a very long time. Historical records of earthquakes and studies of seismic faults show that in Southern California, big earthquakes happen on average every 110 to 140 years. In 1857, close to Palm Springs, a 7.9 magnitude earthquake happened near Los Angeles. This was the last big earthquake. Jordan predicts that ultimately the fault will explode, even though it hasn't in over 300 years. Every few years, seismologists make a prediction about how likely it is that something like this will happen, even though they can't say exactly when it will happen. In its most recent prediction, the USGS said that there is a 7% chance that a magnitude 8 earthquake will happen in California within the next 30 years. According to Jordan, a magnitude 8.3 earthquake might be feasible in California if the whole San Andreas Fault ruptured from the Mexican border to Northern California but he doesn't believe that's realistic. A group of scientists who study earthquakes came up with a shakeout scenario a few years ago to try and figure out what might happen when the big one comes. Seismologists predict how the Earth would shake, and engineers and social scientists use that information to make predictions about the damage and effects that would happen. A 7.8 earthquake that hypothetically hit the Coachella Valley at 10 a.m. on November 13, 2008 was investigated in depth in the paper. Within minutes, the earthquake's waves spread over California, destroying older structures, causing traffic problems, and cutting off water and electric supplies. However, they observed that the earthquake was just the beginning, and that hundreds of fires broke out as a result of the clogged highways and damaged water systems while smaller flames combined into bigger ones, destroying whole portions of the city. The pipes bringing water, power and gas to Los Angeles all crossed the San Andreas Fault. They were not repaired for months after they shattered during the earthquake. Even though most modern buildings survived the earthquake, many of them were damaged so badly that they couldn't be used anymore. Days later, aftershocks rumbled through the state, causing further damage. Lucy Jones, a seismologist at the USGS, argues that the scenario may be overstated. Jones says that the scientists who did the analysis were shocked by how bad the fire damage was from the earthquake. If the Santa Ana winds are blowing at the time of the earthquake, things could get even worse. Even though Los Angeles has a water supply on its own side of the San Andreas Fault, the drought has caused the reservoirs to run dry. Because of this, the seasonal winds blow dusty, dry air from the interior to the coast, which makes wildfires more likely. If the earthquake happened today, there wouldn't be enough water to last for up to six months. The researchers figured that this kind of earthquake would cause about $200 billion worth of damage, 50,000 injuries and 2,000 deaths. Jones claims that the issue is more about the suffering that follows the earthquake and people giving up on Southern California than it is about individuals dying in the earthquake. Everything a city needs to run, water, power, sewage systems, telecommunications and roads would be devastated and they would not be fixed for many months. The local economy might quickly collapse in the absence of functional infrastructure and residents would flee Los Angeles, she said. Jones was concerned that the impossible scenario of the imaginary San Andreas disaster may convince people that they have nothing to worry about or that there is nothing they can do about it, even though it might serve as another wake-up call for Californians. Although it is currently not possible to accurately predict earthquakes, some people may still believe that experts can give them advanced warning of major earthquakes. However, even if this is not the case, it is important for people in California to be prepared for future earthquakes by identifying vulnerabilities and taking steps to improve the city's resilience. Los Angeles could be better prepared for earthquakes by changing building codes so that older buildings can be retrofitted with earthquake-resistant features, by strengthening the Los Angeles aqueduct so that it doesn't collapse if the San Andreas Fault breaks, and by upgrading or adding backup systems to networks for electricity, phones, and the internet. But these steps would be expensive, take a long time to put into place, and could face other problems. The USGS believes that a major earthquake along the San Andreas Fault could be the most catastrophic natural disaster to hit North America and has created a website to inform the public about this possibility. Even though a large earthquake is unlikely to occur anytime soon, it is a good idea to be prepared in case one does occur, so you are not caught off guard. 
That's all for this video, and we will see you soon in the next one.